Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's your girl Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. Thank you for supporting us. Keep supporting us. Keep subscribing. Keep liking. Keep commenting. And please motivate me by giving me stuff to react to. So today I'm going to be reacting to last challenge and the best core Amid did that 312. So without wasting time, let's get into the video. Books all put together would be not more than this. This is a one-man job if he did it if Muhammad did the job it's a one-man job the whole Bible 40 different authors went to produce this Matthew Mark Luke John Joshua Micah Elisha Elijah and on and on 40 different persons went to formulate this book the Christian Bible and this one-man job and this man he didn't know how to read or write he couldn't sign his own name. Then A.J. Arbery, an Englishman, he takes the trouble of translating the Quran into English. And in his preface he says, whenever I hear the Quran chanted, meaning beautifully recited like the young child was doing, whenever I hear the Quran chanted, it is as though I'm listening to music. It is though I'm listening to music. Underneath the flowing melody, there is sounding all the time the insistent beat of a drum. It is like the beating of my heart. He can't help. If he understands, he can't help vibrating with it. It is like the beating of my heart. It's a Christian talking. Then Mami Duke Pictol, an Englishman, he also translated the Quran into English. And when he translates the Quran, in his preface he says, that the sound of the witch moves men to ecstasy and tears. You don't have to be really a believer. If you listen to people like Abdul Samad Abdul Basit reciting the Quran, you just can't help vibrating. I have seen with my own eyes a Frenchman who didn't understand a word of the Quran, the Arabic Quran, and when he's listening to Basit, I can see him swaying. He just couldn't control himself. But there are people who can be hardened themselves and laugh it off. It is quite in order. It depends upon our prejudice. We can develop prejudices and we can ignore the most beautiful things. So now in this last and final revelation of God, God Almighty gives the final warning. Chapter 2, verse 23, 24. He says, وَإِن كُنْتُمْ فِي if there is anyone who has any doubts with regards to what we have revealed to our servant, Muhammad, from time to time, فَأْتُوا بِسُورَةٍ مِّن مثلي. Come on then, you produce a chapter, a surah like it. And we are assured that not only that you won't be able to do this, you will never, never be able to do this. It's a standing challenge for 1400 years. That you, the whole world put together, Another place Allah says, Qulla in atil insu wal jinnu. Say if the whole of mankind and jinns, the spirit world, were to, were to gather together, wa in kuntum fi raibim mimma nazzalna ala abdina, fa'atu bi suratim min misli. Then produce a chapter like it. They will not be able to produce a chapter like it. And it carries on to say that this is God's book and there is, it can't be reproduced. That's a challenge, a standing challenge. Now, in accepting a challenge of that kind, you see, if it's a miracle, it is claimed to be a miracle, then you must have the freedom to challenge it. There are certain barriers. The non-Muslim world, generally, they have a good excuse to say, look, we don't know Arabic. It's a good excuse. But there are, in the world today, 15 million Arab Christians. And they are not all simpletons. Some of the geniuses, Tariq Aziz, you heard the name? The foreign minister of Iraq. Who is he? An Arab Christian. And in his hierarchy, there are a number of Arab Christians. Then in Egypt, there are 10 million Egyptian Christians, Coptic Christians, 10 million. In the Lebanon, there are thousands of millions of Christians. And all put together, 15 million Christians today and they know Arabic as their mother tongue. The very first book of Arabic that I ever came across, I wanted to learn Arabic as a young man. 
And uh, I went to the bookshops in my youth, and I found a book, Egyptian Arabic by Spiro Bay. I went, later on discovered that Spiro Bay was a Christian. I started learning Arabic, Wahid, Ithnain, Thalasa, Arba, Hamsa, but I didn't go very far. But first book I ever had in my life in my hand to learn the language was written by a Christian Arab. And they run magazines and newspapers. However, for 1400 years, the challenge has stood. But the Christians were not sleeping. The Arab Christians, they had a 16-year project. They want to meet the challenge. So they gathered their learned men, and after 16 years, they did produce something. They call this, uh, just read the title. What's the title? Siratul Masih. Siratul Masih. Bil Arabiya. Fasih. You know, in eloquent Arabic. They want to match the Quran. So they wrote a book, this one here. This is the New Testament, but this is in a language absolutely different from the Bible in Arabic. I have the Bible in Arabic, but this is something different. This was addressed to the Muslims. Says, you see, you have a challenge in the Quran. Produce something like it. We have produced it. So we read it. And I read some sections to you from the very start. Very first sentence of this book begins. This is to accept the Quranic challenge. It begins. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Is there a Muslim here who would take objection to that? Huh? This is in the Christian Bible. He now begins with Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Actually, the first verse of the Quran. In the Holy Quran, every chapter begins, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, in the name of Allah most gracious, most merciful. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, in the name of Allah most gracious, most merciful. 114 chapters, out of which 113 begins with this formula. So now the Christians want to challenge the book. To challenge the book, what they do? They plagiarize. This is called plagiarism, meaning stealing in literature. To meet a challenge, you don't steal the man's own works. They stole the first verse of the Quran. Now for every chapter in this book, there is no Christian Bible on earth. No revelation came down from heaven. But every chapter now, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. This this Christian Bible now. Bismillah. And he's catching the unwary. Any non any Muslim, non-Arab, immediately says it's the Quran. And if it's read like Basit reads, we lap it up. Anything. It is Allah's kalam, because we are used to listening to Allah's kalam, the way the young child was reciting to us. And I gave you some examples, which I, at the first reading, naturally I was terrified. Because I'm a non-Arab, and I don't know Arabic as a language. What I'm quoting to you is what I read in Arabic. I can read in Arabic, but I don't understand the meaning, so I need a translation. So what I know from a translation, I'm sharing with you. But when I read this, Naturally, I'm getting terrified because while I'm reading, I can recognize words which are Quranic. I'm used to listening to those words, and I see them here, and I see them there, as if it's a new revelation coming with Quranic words. I give you an example. The Arabs, I don't know. Look, I want you to hold your peace. Don't laugh, because um, I have seen people go berserk laughing. They go out, out of control laughing at this 16-year project. I don't want you to laugh, please. You know, I hope you promise me you don't laugh. Just listen. Now, I'm trying to read the way I would read the Quran. But I don't I think, Akhi, if you read it, you know, your own usual Arabic way. I know I didn't tell you. I'm sure we can get a volunteer. You know, try to read with the tartil, like we, you read the Quran, like Bismillah, like Basit, not as good as Basit, but the best that you can. Can I get a volunteer, please? Come, come, my son, come. Come. Plagiarism is just unacceptable, but I'm trying to understand this video, you know. Um, Muhammad recited or repeated the words that were given to him by God to the people. And among us, those people were his companions who wrote down whatever they wrote down. 
and those were different companions at the end of the day when they said let's have one quran they came together and put that quran together yes and here's the bible wherever the message comes from people come together and say let this be what should be in the bible i'm trying to figure out what the difference is here nonetheless I also do understand that the Muslims um, is it accept the the message in the Bible some of it not everything some of it if then like I said I'm confused why speak like this towards the Bible if you still believe some of the things in the Bible it's just um, constantly confusing otherwise um, I always say uh, the Muslims are brave for actually believing in the Bible and actually coming out and saying, yeah, but we believe in the Bible, but you don't. You understand? Because that speaks volumes. I always say there's some commonness among these religions that exist in this world. Whether we like it or not, there will always be that common ground that ties them together that um, many people share. So let me know what you guys think if you've, got, if you've got the answers to my question the confusion that i have with the message that's been delivered by one of my favorites i mean did that of course uh comment down below feel free to answer me down below make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video